de novo hypertension. Although hypertension is defined as blood pressure over 140 by 90 millimeters of mercury, the American College of Cardiology guideline of 2017 used a lower threshold for defining hypertension that is more than 130 by 80 millimeters of mercury. An estimated 1.3 billion people in the world have hypertension. Hypertension is a major risk factor for stroke, atherosclerosis, heart failure and kidney disease. Current guidelines recommend measuring BP at least two times at least two occasions. The physician should use a standardized technique, a validated device and the correct cuff size. BP should be recorded with the patient's back well supported, legs uncrossed, feet on floor and measurement arm placed at the heart level and is well supported and after the patient's has been at rest in this position for at least five minutes. Automated devices that take 4 to 6 pp measures and show the mean value are increasingly used in OPDs, these are highly useful to minimize white coat hypertension. Ambulatory blood pressure monitoring should be considered in patients who may have masked hypertension. Check for risk factors and secondary causes of hypertension. A gradual rise in blood pressure which is usually associated with weight gain and family history of high blood pressure suggests primary hypertension. Resistant hypertension with aggressive end organ damage and other unrelated signs and symptoms is suggestive of a secondary cause of hypertension. Detailed cardiovascular assessment and assessment of target end organ damage. High BP measurement is recommended for individual below 30 years of age to rule out coctation of aorta. For patients suspected of having orthostatic blood pressure alterations, blood pressure should be recorded in standing position. Lab testing involves assessment of factors that may affect patients' response to medications and end organ damage. Testing includes serum levels of sodium, potassium, calcium, uric acid, creatinine, with estimated glomerular filtration rate, hemoglobin, and thyrotropin, a lipid profile, urine lysis, and ECG. Sodium intake should be restricted to less than 1,500 mg per day, weight loss regime to be initiated, aerobic exercises should be done for 90 to 150 minutes per week and alcohol intake should be minimized. Increase intake of potassium-rich foods, adopting a DASH diet and decreed use of NSAIDs, decongestants, and stimulant drugs are recommended. When you plan out drug therapy for a patient who has been diagnosed with hypertension for the first time, choose the drug from any of these four classes angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors, angiotensin receptor blockers, calcium channel blockers, and thiazide diuretics. These drugs are associated with lower risk of cardiovascular events. Clothalidone and hydrochlorothiazide are commonly recommended thiazide diuretics. Benazepril and Fosinopril are commonly recommended ACE inhibitors. They are preferred in patients with CKD with albuminuria, congestive heart failure, after myocardial infarction. Azulsartan and Candesartan are commonly recommended ARBs. Amylodipine and Feldipine are commonly recommended CCBs. Dilchiasm and Verapamil are commonly recommended non-dihydropyridine CCBs.